Hey everybody, welcome to episode three of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. I am your host, Chris Hollifield, and I am excited to bring you this episode. This episode uh, kind of has a little bit of a theme, I guess you would say street vending. Uh, the first interview we talk with is uh, with the three guys that are going to be opening up a brand new food truck here in Salt Lake called Off the Grid. They should be opening up uh, and hitting the streets here in the next couple weeks. They're in the process of getting all their uh, licensing set up and, and their truck uh, detailed and whatnot. So I sit down, I, I, I had a good chat with them. Uh, discussing what you, we can expect from them and a little bit, find out a, a little bit about them. Um, and then the second interview is with some longtime uh, food vending uh, veterans, uh, the City Dogs. I'm actually talking with their new owners that took over ownership uh, this past, uh, over the summer. And uh, we discuss uh, how it's been to be owners of uh, City Dogs. And so, yeah, I mean, uh, Salt Lake City has had some really, really great uh, new food uh, vending places popping up, food trucks, street vendors, as well as local restaurants. And hopefully I'll get a chance to talk with them all and uh, showcase them a little bit. Uh, I Am Salt Lake Podcast is here to... um, kind of show off a, a different side of Salt Lake, something you might not be as familiar with, uh, the Salt Lake area in, in surrounding areas, something you might not be as familiar with. Uh, so many people are, are familiar with the uh, the few traditional uh, places and, and, and a lot of the other uh, things get unnoticed. So I'm, I'm really excited for the interviews that uh, I'm going to be bringing you today. Uh, you can check out the show notes for them and find out their Facebook and Twitter links at IamSaltLake.com. That's also a good place to find out our contact information, uh, IamSaltLake at gmail.com, as well as our voicemail at 385-202-5926. If you are interested in being interviewed on a uh, future episode, feel free to get in touch as well and give me your story as well. Uh, I'm eager to get to know you a little bit better and, and, and get a chance to showcase you on your, on this uh, podcast. Like I said, Salt Lake City, this is your podcast, and uh, I'm just kind of here to help you along the way and uh, help you out. I, I believe there's a lot of really great uh, people that are doing a real, lot of really awesome things in the city, and this is their chance to uh, get showcased and shine a little. Um, also, if any feedback, feel free to, to let me know. I, I appreciate constructive criticism. You can check the podcast out on iTunes uh, as well as Stitcher Radio. Both of those links are on the website, IamSaltLake.com. Feel free to uh, you know leave any reviews or, or, or uh, subscribe to uh, the podcast on there as well. Eventually, I would like to uh, get this podcast on a weekly basis if I can uh, get the content built up enough and uh, kind of go from there. Uh, let's see here. A couple of events that are coming up uh, this upcoming Saturday. Uh, for those of you that are familiar uh, with my activity on Instagram, I host uh, some of the Insta Walks along with a friend of mine, Heather. Uh, we host some of the Insta Walks here in Salt Lake. And this Saturday, we're actually going to be doing an Insta walk at in Provo at Historic uh, Center Street, kind of checking out some of the shops and taking some photos down there. And so, what you're going to want to do is you want to download the Instagram app and uh, join us Saturday four o'clock. We're meeting at the uh, corner of University and Center Street. Of course, uh, regular cameras are welcome for that. We are trying to do a uh, monthly photo walk. Um, in different areas, kind of exploring different things. So feel free to join us on Instagram so you don't miss any of the events at uh, InstaWalk SLC. Also on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash InstaWalk SLC. And uh, you can kind of keep in touch of where we will be having our next InstaWalk if you can't make this Provo one. Uh, also on the 22nd, as we mentioned in the uh, City Dogs interview, is Strut Your Mutt. It's a fun event here in Salt Lake. And uh, Farmer's Market. Make sure you're checking that out. That's every Saturday uh, downtown from 8 to 1. Uh, downtown Pioneer Park. That will be going through, I believe, the third week of October. So if you have an event that you want me to talk about on the podcast, 
feel free to drop me an email at IamSaltLake at gmail.com and uh, just say, hey, you know what? I got this event coming up. I got this show coming up, and I want to uh, showcase it a little bit. Uh, so, yeah, I got some great interviews coming up in future episodes, and um, it's going to be a really good time, and I appreciate everybody who's showing interest in the podcast uh, for this being the only third episode. I think it's going to be really fun. It's gonna, we're gonna, I'm having a lot of fun putting it together, and I appreciate the people that are willing to sit down and talk with me. Uh, I apologize for the quality of the interviews. The microphone that I do use uh, is... It is what it is, and I, I do have a new microphone coming, so uh, that should be uh, help the interview's uh, quality a little bit better. So um, the, the, the quality of them is, uh, you know, uh, it is what it is. Anyways, uh, without talking much further, I want to uh, play the interview I had with uh, Off the Grid Food Truck, let you get, have a chance to get to know them a little bit better. And uh, like I said, I'm going to be posting the links to their Facebook and Twitter on the show notes. And uh, yeah, I'm going to stop talking now. And uh, here's the guys from Off the Grid Food Truck. All right, I'm sitting here talking to Trevor and Vinny and Randy. Randy. Okay, excellent. And uh, the name of your guys' food truck that you guys are working on is Off the Grid, correct? Correct. Correct. And uh, so tell me a little bit about it. How did the three of you guys get together um, with this idea, and, and uh, how, do you, how, do you, how do you know each other? Well, we all work together at the same place, and um, I think and, and we're all in the graphics industry. So one day uh, we were driving out to Colorado for a race, and we just kind of started talking about food trucks. And... Uh, I had been interested in doing this in the past, and so it, it really kind of sparked, sparked something in me, and, and uh, Vinny and I just kind of kept going back and forth with ideas, and um, we realized there's, there's a lot of things that we have the capability to do that others might not, as far as graphics and, and things like that, and so um, pretty quickly it, it turned more into, uh, well, how do, not, should we do this, or just how are we going to do this, and um, Actually, make it happen. Make yeah. make make the dream a reality. Right. And uh, so, so you're in the process right now of uh, building the truck, getting it together. Truck is built. Built. It's um, ready to. Should be ready to go. We we have a health inspection tomorrow. Actually, okay. tomorrow morning, and hopefully we'll pass that. We're pretty confident. No, I know and, how that uh, goes. It's like cross <laughs> your fingers. You know, I've had a few friends that have gone to some local cafes and restaurants and stuff, and so it's. There's always that stressful moment sure. of... it could be a lot. There's a lot of little things that, that you don't think necessarily would present a problem. and then They don't they exactly have a uh, checklist or manual either, so yeah. it's... So they'll come up and they'll give you a list of everything you now need to fix. Yeah. And then, so, but we spent pretty much all day Saturday fixing those things, so... So you should be good to go. And, and, and if the inspection passes, when do you plan on hitting the streets of Salt Lake? When do you... I mean, is there like a goal, or is it kind of just taking one step at a time, seeing... Well, I think our, our original uh, goal was to open on September 1st, which I obviously didn't make that. I mean, there's... And so we ended up having, um, was it some art stroll? Yeah, there's an art stroll in Sugar House on September 22nd, mm-hmm. um, Saturday. And it's, uh, it's kind of starts in the uh, mid-afternoon, I think maybe uh, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, like okay. around noon, goes, uh, extends into the evening, and we were able to kind of conditionally get a spot there. So we're just, um, it, it's very much like a give and take with the, the health department and things like that. That is very much the, uh, the last hurdle that we have to get yeah, through. Yeah. Um, everything else is, uh, is squared away as far as our food sourcing or commissary and that kind of stuff goes. So. so tell me a little bit about your menu, like what, what, what kind of items you guys plan on, on serving and having. Um, we're doing Brussels style waffles, um, and just sort of savory and sweet creations based on those waffles, as well as uh, locally roasted coffee from the Bean Hole. Right. And um, that's that's kind of the the basics of it. We're still dialing things in a little. Bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think a lot of it we're just gonna end up playing by ear as we as we go 
go and get breakfast stuff. We can make sandwiches. Um, you know, if you want something that's not exact one, maybe we probably can do it. Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, we, we do want to have a relatively set menu so we can get stuff out quickly, which I, mean, I don't think that, that was one of the things that we talked about originally is that we didn't feel there was any food truck that could, that could get stuff out quickly. So there was mm. these big lines for, uh, for other trucks and you would you'd stand there for you know, half an hour when they were busy. Yeah. Food, so we wanted to try and get that process down. So, oh, go ahead. Oh, um, well, definitely one of the things that, that has been sort of part of our concept, too, is to have um, essentially an entire menu that's vegetarian-friendly. Excellent, um, excellent. But also everything um, should appeal to non-vegetarians, and they should also have the ability to, you know, add ham or, you know, whatever... Whatever, so we're kind of appealing to everybody and not just um, a few people. I'm vegetarian, so I, I know how frustrating it is to uh, to go to a, a food truck or go to something and there's just really no options at all. So, and I'm not, so not having sausage in the truck is kind of a deal breaker. <laughs> yeah, well, it's it's good to it's good to appeal to to all the you know the people, and then you you're going to get the the variety and 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 then you know the business as well. Right. And I think we did like a, a, or I should say Trevor did a very good job as far as taking a, some creative twists on things where um, we appeal very much to uh, vegetarian diets and, and even uh, uh, we, we could potentially appeal to other diets, but not, um, not so much in your face about it, uh, where being a non-vegetarian myself and other people who have sampled the menu, it's not like we're... Um, trying to force a new uh, new type of cuisine on, on others. It's, it's very much like uh, comfort foods that you're used to for yeah. um, you know, just uh, simple waffle creations up to things that you wouldn't think about, but when you see it displayed on our menu, uh, like our take on biscuits and gravy or something like that, that it's, um, uh, I don't know, it kind of makes sense. That it, um, yeah. Uh, that was, I think that was one of the other things that Trevor and I agreed upon, because I'm also a vegetarian, but mm. we didn't want to be the type of people that, like, if we saw someone eating a, a hamburger, like, you know, that someone had to die, if you eat that. I mean, you know, because to, to, to me, it's a choice. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a personal choice to have, to have that kind of diet. Um, I don't really care if someone eats meat. That's totally up to them. If they want it, I'll make it for them, but, you know, it's not for me. Um, but I do want to be able to have everyone feel comfortable and have what they want. Well, excellent. Um, and... Uh, do you, do any of you guys come from the food industry? Then is that do, do you guys work now in any restaurants or? or I think or, that all of us have at some point. At otherwise. some point, <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's it's one of those things where we're all um, we absolutely love food. And yeah, I think that's yeah. that's probably the biggest love of my life at this point is food, and I constantly think about eating food. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, and did you guys all grow up here in Salt Lake or where are you guys where where are you guys from? Are you guys We're from from all around. I'm originally from Boulder, Colorado. Oh, excellent. Um I grew up uh, actually on the East Coast right outside of Philadelphia. Oh, really? So when I was uh when we were first talking about the food truck idea, uh it's something that as far as street vending goes, it's something that I was used to or kind of yeah. grew up doing uh the cheesesteaks and things like that are we're, Super popular. Whereabouts in Pennsylvania? Uh, I grew up in the Poconos. Oh, okay. Um, I, I lived in the Wilkes-Barre Scranton area uh, for about no, five went, years. So I went to college at Wilkes. Oh. Four years at Wilkes. There you go. There you go. Yeah, just kind of a random little town. <laughs> I sure? lived out that there. That's one way to describe it. <laughs> uh, about, about 11 years ago, I lived nice. out there. Where in Wilkes-Barre? Just downtown? Uh, uh, Luzerne. Okay. Uh, yeah. Cool. yeah. Very just cool. Just friends and in early 20s wanted to try something new and and so that's kind of random you know run into <laughs> run into somebody wilkes is a great great school yeah, great school yeah. um fun times and so so yeah you, you guys all met here in salt lake and and so besides besides food and everything what, what are some other things you guys enjoy doing like or, or this kind of consuming any of your free time right now i mean what uh what other kind of interests and hobbies i mean yeah, I mean, I would say music uh, or, or I'm uh, probably uh, the food truck has motivated me quite a bit because I originally uh, left Pennsylvania to come out here uh, to do all the outdoor activities, yeah. like our skiing and all that kind of stuff. And uh, <clears throat> one kind of one step led to another, and I found myself in uh, very much like a nine to five daily grind job. Yeah. Um, and the the um, the way that we kind of have shaped the idea of the food truck, hopefully, it'll be able to. Um, 
to kind of free up uh, the, the time to go out and enjoy that, the outdoors and all that stuff while also um, hopefully, you know, locating the food truck in places that we can help others, uh, you know, get a good... What, what, do you, what do you guys think of the food truck in the scene? It seems like it's kind of growing here in Salt Lake. I mean, it, 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 you know... Very uh, much on the upswing, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I, uh, I just recently was up in Portland, who obviously has a booming food truck kind of... Uh, cult up there following yeah. they just have uh, lots and lots of uh, local people kind of you know interested in it and uh, you can see when I was relating it back to Salt Lake that everything here is kind of still very much in the seed phase but we're starting to grow into that it's like we're on that same uh, trajectory to having a, a lot of street vendors doing some awesome uh, ideas yeah, yeah salt lake is turning into kind of a it's it's really coming together as a city i think mm-hmm. i think there's a lot of people here that are trying to do things and 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 make it what it is kind of uh and it's neat to see people like yourselves you know try to do something when you look at at portland is a good example the last six or seven years it seems to me like Salt Lake is almost Portland's little brother. Yeah. You know, we're just a little behind, but we're coming along and kind of growing into the same sort of, uh, um, I don't know, the, pe- the people kind of seem uh, about the same. Yeah, the same, same interests and, and uh, interests and, and uh, kind of yeah. followings and stuff. Well, excellent. And so you guys, you guys are on Twitter and Facebook. I mean, is that going to be the best way for people to find out where you guys are going to be located at once you guys get up and going, or or uh, the website? Best place would be the um, the website off the grid slc dot com. Okay. And that'll uh, <clears throat> that'll link you to uh, both the Facebook and the Twitter page if you if that's more of your interest as far as being able to follow us. And uh, we'll have all sorts of um, you know either uh, texting or. Um, email notifications. However, you want us to let you know where we're going to be. We'll yeah, because I find that's probably like the toughest thing. It's like, oh, where are they going to be at tonight, or where are they going to? Are they going to be at this event? Or, you know, I'm sure a lot of it might be last minute. Some of it might be. You know, I don't really know how it works as far as as far as uh, legalities uh, in Salt Lake to just pull up somewhere and park. And, and yeah, there, there are some yeah. interesting ones that we found out about where you can and can't park. Um, just out of curiosity, I mean, what what is it? What? Well, there's. I mean, you can't you can't uh, do like an ice cream truck just drive up down the streets. Yeah. Um, you have to be in pretty much anywhere that's like business zoned. You can be in some mixed residential business areas, but they're very very limited. And even then, you're never really going to find somewhere to to park. Yeah, because I've heard Salt Lake does have some interesting interesting laws when it comes to yeah kind of like with what we were just talking about about being on the upswing of the food truck they just recently have eased up or or, uh, catered some uh, local health codes and um, parking codes and things like that to help the food truck and mobile vendors such as uh, you used to only be able to park in a spot for two hours and now you can park in a spot for 12 hours as long as you're paying for parking Um, so that's helped out quite a bit and uh, we just feel that probably you know, every year, and hopefully we'll be able to voice our opinion. I know a lot of the other food truck guys are definitely out there making sure that, uh, like, our voice is heard as far as uh, easing up on some of the different codes and things like that. Mm-hmm. that are, uh, yeah. okay, I was, I was going to say, it just, I think if you, if you can put together a valid argument um, that a lot of the laws that, that are hindering the food trucks are out for other reasons. It's not to hinder mobile food vendors. They were there for, for various reasons, as such as such as like the parking laws. And and, and they might be a little outdated too, oh, considering so. you know the food truck scene is kind of new for Salt Lake. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's been it's been around for a little while, but I think it's really hitting it hard now. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of you know newer trucks popping up and uh, interest in them. And and so I think maybe some of the laws might, like you said change you know with the two hour parking 12 hour parking and, well, and I think one of the things that we found too is that uh, the all the owner operators that are in the food truck they're all very cooperative everybody wants to work with each other and so I mean we're going to have a big group of people that all want the same thing so it'll make it a little bit easier to maybe try and get laws changed to, to our favor and uh-huh. maybe get um, the, the whole concept with the Galvin Center food truck gathering where there's only a few of them and you go to Portland and they take up entire parking lots yeah, um, you know, I'm sure that eventually we could probably swing something like that here. Be great. Well, is there anything else you guys would like to add before we uh, wrap the uh, conversation up, or or anything? I mean, uh, we, I think we got the website, you got the Twitter, the Facebook. 
Um, kind of keep your eyes out, I guess, for you guys. The 22nd at Sugar House. Um, we hope to probably do more of a formal grand opening type thing around October 1st. Okay. Um, yeah, once we get kind of our feet wet, get out there, figure out what we're, we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, and really kind of hype up the, our grand opening, get everybody out, eat, have a waffle. Yeah. yeah. We're definitely learning a lot every day. We still have a lot to learn and figure out. And oh, absolutely. And I know, I know, you know, I, I just kind of wanted to sit down with you guys, you know, help get your name out a little bit. Uh, I'm eager to try you guys out. I know that, you know, I mean, you know, try That's your good. food out. I'm always up for trying new things. And, and I appreciate you uh, taking a few minutes out of your, I know you guys are probably busy and uh, sit down and, and talk. I know it's not always the easiest, especially to get three people together. No problem. Um, but uh, I appreciate it. No Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, seriously, I cannot wait until that food truck hits the streets of Salt Lake. Sounds good from the way they described it. Uh, go check out IamSaltLake.com for the show notes to connect with them on Facebook and Twitter, as well as uh, their website. I will be posting all of that on there. And uh, you know what? I'm going to try to uh, post a follow-up uh, in a future episode. Uh, hit, hit their truck up and uh, do a little follow-up uh, interview, uh, hopefully with those guys, um, after, uh, after I try one of their uh, delicious uh, food items from the truck, um, off-the-grid food truck. Anyways, uh, the next interview is uh, from City Dogs. They're a food vending cart on uh, Salt Lake City downtown. They also hit up some of the events. They were at some of the uh, different events that you might have uh, been to uh, over the summer. And uh, even, you know what, I'll tell you what, even if you're not uh, thinking that, hey, you know what, I don't, I, I don't really like vegetarian food, uh, their hot dogs and their broths are uh, pretty, uh, pretty tasty. I think uh, even if you're a non-vegetarian, you would... Uh, really enjoy eating one of their hot dogs so go check them out downtown they're on uh, 300 south as well and uh you know what tell them you heard them on the podcast i think they would uh get a little bit of a kick out of that so uh anyways this is the uh, folks from city dog we're talking uh we sat down and we're at salt lake uh, roasting company coffee and uh, we just had a little conversation about where uh, City Dogs is and, and the direction it's going and, and kind of uh, how it is to be new owners of a new business. Uh, it's not always easy. Some uh, late nights uh, that they probably had to put in, and, and it's a lot of hard work. But uh, you know what? It's what makes Salt Lake what it is, uh, seriously. Without uh, people like these, uh, David and Brianna, uh, Salt Lake wouldn't be what it is today. And uh, it's a great city. So anyways, uh, here's the uh, folks from City Dogs. Enjoy the interview and uh, let me know what you think. All right, I'm talking to uh, Dave and Brianna and uh, we're talking about City Dogs. And pretty much what I'm curious of is how did you guys get involved, uh, first off, or, or with City Dogs? Um, actually, my sister... And on Facebook, she saw that Jesse was putting it for sale, so she tagged our names into it. Because we have been talking for the last couple of years of like buying a cart or a food truck or doing something like that. Uh-huh. So when we saw that that was for sale, we were just kind of like, well, let's go look into it and see what it is, and just maybe. For coffee, and talk to him a little bit. And how long have you guys been the owners in of uh, City City Dogs? March yeah. got open. And so, so for for a good portion of the summer, yeah. And and you guys have stayed pretty busy vending and and doing events. And what are some of the events you did over the summer? I mean, what? Uh, Gay Pride. Uh, we did the uh, Live Green. Uh, we did Unite SLC. <laughs> and what was all we just did? Oh, Beer, Beer Fest. <laughs> City Weekly Beer Fest. Um, we've also done a little bit like uh, the band Folk Hogan, uh, the bass player is a big fan of ours, so he had us come uh, to the woodshed and serve food uh, while they were playing a show in a bar. So that was pretty cool. Right on, right on. And do you think, I mean, do you think the name City Dogs, I mean, uh, it, has, it has a pretty good name recognition here in Salt Lake, because yeah. I mean, it's been around for, what, two or three years now? Four years yeah. now. 
And do you guys know the original owner at all? Or? I went to school with the original owner's uh, brother. I mean, I, I know of the guy. But yeah. I never went fucking off him. Yeah. Yeah. And do you guys, is it the same menu, the same original menu as as when it first started or did you guys oh, change I anything? So. I think there's been a few things added over the years and then we've done a few specials to try to try new things. Yeah, I think at one point there was tacos on there but that's oh, yeah. I, I'm sure that other owners have tried their their own thing and their own recipes and stuff and they kind of do the same. So if somebody that's never been to your food cart, what tell me about your menu. What What's on your menu? What... Uh, um, so everything's vegan except for a few selection of the chips. But then we have like you know, basic hot dog, uh, beer brat, Italian sausage. And then we have a few specialty dogs. Uh, there's a, like a chili cheese dog, a D dog. D dog is a cream cheese, uh, avocado, jalapenos. It's really, really good. Really, people love it. Um, city dog is basically like a Chicago dog. Except instead of a pickle, we have a asparagus on there. It's really good. It's my favorite. I eat it every day. <laughs> you think I'd be sick of it, but I still. Yeah. Even when I'm not there, I'm like, oh shit, I want a city dog. Yeah. We also have a barbecue rib and a mad hatter. Yeah. Mad hatter is like a tuna salad wrap. Kind of so it's, a, it's made up with tempeh. Yeah. That's really good. It's really tasty. That was the last owner, Jesse. That was his thing that he came up with. And we've kept because it's really popular. It's did, really good. did you guys come up with any new items in or no? Um, we she does a really good uh, chicken salad, but we, we had it out one for like a week. A, week. Yeah, a couple of weeks had it for a special for a couple of weeks, and kind of try to do it like you know for do a special like for a week or two of the same item. Mm. Try to do it like once a month or so, so that you know. So, yeah, we uh, we also have jumbo frank, so it's like a regular hot dog, but twice the size. Have that as an option because a lot of people want hot dogs enough, so you get a jumbo frank instead. Has a slightly different taste than a regular hot dog, but not by much. And do you take like I mean, do people ever try to come up with their own inventions? Be like, oh, add this and add this, and yeah, I, I mean, yeah, uh, you get people like oh. I put this on there, or you guys should have that, or, you know. And then... And I do that, you know, I, I tell people when they get a city dog, I'm like, I'll put veganism on it, it's so good. And then they look at you like, what are you talking yeah. about? <laughs> oh, you're gross. <laughs> and so, I mean, do you, do you get people, I mean, because when, when you're set up downtown uh, during normal lunch, do you ever get people that come to your cart and they expect to find just a regular hot dog. All the time. And they're like, well, what is this? What is this? Yeah. Just, yeah. You know. Yeah. All the time. Yeah, people uh, always suggest, no like, you should have meat or, as well. Yeah, they'll they order something and be like, and I want that all beef. And I'm like, you don't have any beef. So. <laughs> and after you're halfway done making the item or something, yeah. you're like. And you got some people that are like, you know what, I've never had one. I'll try it. You know, no problem. And, and that's great. And they're like, oh, that's actually really good. Yeah. And then you get some people that are halfway through it and then realize that the front of the cart says vegan vegetarian in big letters. You know, you yeah. can't mess it up. You get some people that are halfway through their diet and like, oh, this is, uh, this is gross. But, you know, they've already eaten half of it. They just read the sign, got the stigma that goes along with it, and then decided that it was disgusting, you know, before they were chomping away and it was good. Do, do people really tell you to, to your face, oh, that was disgusting? Uh, Beer Fest, I had one guy, actually. Really? I, I sat and I watched him. He was up the stairs a little ways, and he's eating, and, and he looks over and he sees the cart and he kind of does a double take and he looks closer and he's like, I can see a mouth, ooh, it's vegan. And then he's like, eh, and his, his buddy takes the dog and finishes eating it and it's like halfway done already. And he comes over and he's like, I just got to tell you guys, you know, that, was, that, that hot dog was gross. That was the worst thing I have ever eaten in my life or something like that. And, and before we can even be like, hey, do you want your money back? Do you, would you like to try something else? He turned around and... And started, and he said it as loud as he could, you know, yeah. trying to just be a dick. And, and we had a customer <laughs> there, and she's like, "Really, dude? I think it's delicious." And you know, she's like, "You're an idiot." I didn't have to say it to him, so because <laughs> she did. Yeah. yeah I mean, was, you get over a while, but yeah. oh, well, it's, you know. it's a hard lesson to learn. You know, I, I'm I don't do well with like rejection or. or uh, you're not going to win everybody yeah, over. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And that's something that I, I'm learning now. And, and I've been in the restaurant industry since I was 16, so I'm kind of used to people are going to complain. You know, you can't please everyone. Yeah. I'm used to it, so I'm just like, okay, you know. The only thing that sucked with that guy is like, yeah, I wish we could have 
fixed it by either like offering him something else or giving him his money back. Yeah, absolutely. So then, because word of mouth can kill you, so, so yeah. instead of him being like, "Oh, that sucked," but he'd be like, "Oh, I didn't like it," but they were nice enough yeah. to do and something. I've, he just stormed off before we could I've, say anything. It's just like, okay. I've had people at the corner, you know, that like, "Oh, you know, this isn't good," and, and obviously they're expecting you know an Oscar Mayer wiener, and you know, I'm fine that they don't like it. Your money back as long as you don't eat like but you but you guys' prices are great though that's what's yeah. you know what's crazy yeah. it's not like you're charging like twenty dollars for yeah, a hot yeah, dog you know yeah. it's like hey you know it's a fair price you know and if, if i mean I, I go to regular restaurants all the time and if, if i don't like the food then then you know you just kind of tuck it away you don't need to be a jerk about yeah, exactly. it and be an ass and 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 because you're just really making an idiot out of yourself you know <laughs> that, that, that's how i like it it's, uh, it's, you know, if i don't like something yeah exactly i'm just like oh, or whatever but i don't know I mean, because you, you guys have great reviews like you know on online and and, and yelp and and uh and uh, a lot of websites, I mean, have, have given you guys some really yeah. good press. I mean, throughout the years. I mean, obviously right. different owners, but but for the most part, it's it's the same. It's the same city dogs, you know. Yeah. And uh, and like that's why we didn't want to change the menu or anything. Yeah. Because that's what people yeah, it's, expect. It's something so. known. It's a product name that's known. And people like it. So. And what's, I mean, overall, what's been the greatest thing about owning a business in Salt Lake? I mean, in, in general, I mean, has there been... Would you say just like the, like Salt Lake, they say, you know, okay, is, is, is a vegan, vegetarian friendly. So, I mean, that's got to be pretty awesome to, to have that acceptance. I mean, some cities couldn't yeah. probably pull that off. Yeah. Uh, one of the greatest things, I think, is a lot of the people that we've met, a lot of people in the vegan community and, you know, just, yeah. just the customers that we get. Just, I've, I've, let a, I've met a lot of really, really cool people yeah. doing this. You know, I, I worked construction. I was a construction painter for 15 years before I did this, and I thought I was at myself, so I thought I hated people, because I, yeah. I just didn't really get along, you know, I didn't, didn't go out of my way to talk to anybody, but like this helped me open up and uh, yeah. meet with people that are really, really cool, and even, you know, some of the other vegan uh, restaurants and stuff, so the other vegan cart uh, Union Street. Yeah. Those guys and they're super cool. We do Cakewalk. Miguel runs Cakewalk Kelly. She's super cool. And it's just like a neat little community. It really is. It out, really is. You know, so it's cool. It's do you do you see yourself ever going further than a than a than a food cart, like maybe a food truck or a restaurant? I would love that. Yeah, we'd like to. We're obviously gonna wait to see you know wait a year, you know, yeah. two years, couple years, see how it goes, and then see if we can expand. I mean, that was one of the things Jesse said when he sold it, that he thinks that it needs to either uh, expand and have a fixed location so it can be open all yeah. year, because a lot of people want it all year and whatnot. And, and also, you know, uh, the, the food cart itself is, there's a lot of movements in it, there's a lot of work that goes into it. Uh, you know, it's, and, and, and everything's going to be that way. A restaurants going to be that way. A food trucks going to be that way. But I think those carts just take such a beating, and it, it always seems like there's something breaking, or you know, trying to hurry and fix something yeah, for the day. Yeah. And then, and then you're limited to the space in which all the product you can have. You, know, uh -huh. you can only cram so much shit in the car. Yeah, you know, before you're like, oh, okay, I can't even fit Kleenex in here. Um, so you, so you get to the corner and you get everything unloaded and then you're out of this and then people are like oh why you son of a yeah room in the car to put more shit in there so, you know it, it's that's one issue you know, I'd, I'd love to be able to be open all the way along and, and just be able to walk into a place turn a key fire up a stove and we're good to go you know with the car you gotta load it all up at the commissary you gotta cook all your food there and, and get everything prepped and then you, you load your car up as, as packed as you can get it and you drive it out here and, and you know, you're hitting potholes and you're like oh my God, that hitch doesn't break again or, or whatever you know and then you get out and you, you push it up onto the corner and you unload your car real quick and then you gotta go park your car and then you gotta run back before somebody steals one of your coolers or something and then you gotta unload everything fire up the grill start cooking so, you know so there, there's a lot. a lot a lot of work and a lot of I mean, people don't see that. No, people I don't, don't, you know. And you know, I, I didn't, I didn't think it was gonna, you know, be, I, I didn't think it was gonna be a large park either. But I wasn't thinking that it was gonna be that much that goes into it. You know, it's, I still love it. Yeah. It's just, 
So when, when does your season end? When when do it's you? It's too damn cold. Is that pretty much? It's not like you have a, not like you have a set date no. or something. I mean, and, and that's we were gonna close like for the winter, but now we're kind of gonna wait to see how it goes. Like yeah. last year, it was a little final winter, so it's like maybe we could be open for the winter. And and you know, there's there's the diehard carts that are out there. You know, the tacos, whatever guys are out there, and they. All, all year long, they're just hacking it. Uh, so it's nothing really to do with laws. It's more just to do with no. it's so cold outside. Yeah. I mean, that and, really... and then to have, you know, uh, a niche market like such as we do, to have, you know, our clientele is much smaller than your average Joe's Tacos card that everybody goes to. You know, we have a certain smaller group that, that I mean, we get people that aren't vegan that comes to City Dogs too, but... Yeah. You know, not as much food traffic is going to be as Joe's Tacos, you know, so. And if those people aren't out, then... Yeah, so we're going to basically see how it goes, and, you know, a lot of our customers do work in the buildings around us. Yeah. So, obviously, they still have to eat lunch in the winter, so we'll just see how it goes and kind yeah, of... we'd like to, you know, looking around at things, and even one of those enclosed kind of trailer things, you know, it's, but I don't know where we put that in yeah, it's all about money and, and expanding yeah. And, yeah. And, and and kind of going from and there. Just all the different laws and you know regulations. What are some of the? I mean, laws that you've that you've run into. I mean, what are what are some? Because I've heard that there's this crazy food vending, street vending laws, but I mean, obviously there's still a demand for it, and there's still a. Yeah, I think especially it seems like with this year that there with more trucks popping up and more carts and everything that. Now, like, you know, Salt Lake's realizing that this is actually something that could be a good, you know, yeah. good for the city and everything. And so now they're trying to make the laws better for everyone, you know. But at the same time, it's still really, they haven't figured, it's not, like, all figured out yet. Because I know that last year, when I was looking to maybe get a food truck, they used to have it where you could only be parked somewhere for three hours. Yeah. And then you had to move. Which I guess they got rid of that, but now it's basically you still have to follow all parking laws. So if you're just parked along the street, you have to pay the, the parking, per, or, you know, parking, and you can only be there for the max two hours, and then you have to move. And it's just, it's kind of just, you know, like they're still trying to figure it out and everything. And I mean, the nice thing about the food cart is that, you know, you have the, you get your, they call it like a land use permit. So basically we could park anywhere along 30s between state and second. That's like our little strip yeah. of land that we pay for. And so we never have to worry about, you know, somebody else showing up or that kind of thing. You don't have that kind of competition, but at the same time, it might be nice to be able to like, you know, move around and get to people that can't always, because we have a lot of people that can't come out to us by 3.30. That's yeah. why on Thursdays and Fridays, we've decided to stay open until six, so that some people that live, you oh, know, further south or something, good to know. can try I to get down know. and yeah, get some food before we close. So, and that's kind of what I was curious of is, is since you're not like a food truck, you know, a food truck, it's like okay, it's kind of slow here. Let's go somewhere else and yeah. see, you know, how that is. It's like you're kind of you're kind of stuck where uh-huh. you're where you're at, and I'm sure that gets a little frustrating yeah. sometimes because it can be. And then now, especially with the food trucks, like. Um, I mean, I don't think, it's, yeah, I, mean, I don't. I think it's like you know a healthy competition. It's good yeah. to have, but yeah, it's like you see them parking because I mean they're just yeah. trying to do the same thing, find out yeah. where's a good spot. So I don't know. I get kind of like alpha doggish and this is my corner. Yeah, <laughs> not really, but I mean they can't like park right. Yeah, yeah, they, they can't park, they, like, they can't come the park right next to us or nothing. But, yeah, we'll see them. Well, at the same time, people always, because we have a taco car right next to us that he faces out towards Second East, and everyone's always yeah. like, isn't that competition? And I mean, no, I guess it can be, but at the same time, it's nice because we get groups we of people yeah. that come, and some are vegetarian, some aren't, and so they can, everybody can still kind of come for lunch, but split and go get So, yeah, the taco car, it's not vegetarian. No. I mean, it's just a, just I think they have, like, a quesadilla, but yeah. that's about it. That's There's, like, nothing vegan. I mean, super nice guy, you know, like, if I have to run to the bathroom, I'll be like, hey, can you watch my cart for a minute, you know, lock up yeah. the money box, and I bolt. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. That's yeah. got to, I mean, because I'm sure you guys aren't both at the cart at the now, same time. We both and have uh, other jobs. Okay, yeah, I mean, because it's like when you cl- close up for winter, it's like you got to have money coming in from somewhere, so, yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's, that's kind uh, of the reason why we can move our other jobs, just to 
So we weren't sure if we're going to be open for the winter and just to help until we figure out exactly yeah. how the business is going to go and everything. Now, if somebody was, like, let's say myself, hey, you know what, I'm interested to open a food cart. I mean, what, what kind of advice would you give? I mean, not, I mean, obviously not any secret. I mean, would you just think I was crazy or what? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what? Get like a truck. I, you know. I mean, be warned it is a lot of work. Yeah, and a lot of work. Lot of I mean, a lot of prep. Because mm-hmm. you can do prep at the cart because obviously it's like a kitchen yeah, right there. Yeah, kitchen. Yeah. But, but like still, if you... If you make like a chili or something, you know, something that you can't cook right there, then you've got to cook it at your commissary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, As far as advice, yeah, it's get a bigger car. You're going to be working a lot more than you think. Um, (laughs) uh, That and... I mean, it's just going to have its up and down. It's going to take a while for people to... You're not going to make $300 every day. Yeah. Our yeah. first week we did. <laughs> yeah. I was like, shit, yes. And I was like, All right, that was just a rush. And, and, and oh, go ahead, you. Yeah. And I mean, you never. And that's the thing too. You never know what you're gonna make. Like one day, you can make like forty bucks. So the next day, yeah, you can make three hundred. So it's never. You never know it's never how consistent. it's gonna be. So don't ever yeah. like be like. The only consistent is that certain days are slower. Uh, Mondays are usually kind of slow. Thursdays are slow. Um, yeah, Thursdays are kind of slow, but I've heard it's, I don't know if it's necessarily because of that, but the, a lot of the food trucks go to the Gallivan, yeah. and they're all light up, and so it's like, all the cart people call it the truck day. Cause but could you guys goes. go over to the Gallivan, or no? I mean, or, or is that not really welcome? I mean, I guess it's I more... I don't know if it's more just for, like, your self-contained food truck, or... Yeah. Yeah, I... I never even looked into it, but that could be something. I don't know if they charge them to be there, if it's just like, you know. So do you guys scout out the events, or do, do event people ever contact you guys? or they usually contact us. I think both, yeah. too. Yeah. There's been times where I'm just, you know, I'll hear about something. I'm like, oh, that might be fun. Yeah. So I'll just see if they're looking for vendors. Yeah, and we tried to get on with Twilight this year, but yeah. they didn't accept us. Because one thing I've noticed, I mean, you know, if you guys took over in May, it seems like this year I've seen you guys out and about more. You know, at more events. Uh, you were at the Greek festival. That were no, it was, I swear. Oh, no. I thought I saw you. Um, anyways, uh, I did tweet about it, just saying if you are there, you uh, need to come because oh. we were open. We uh, have been yeah. open on uh, yeah. Saturdays now. Okay, out, okay, so. okay. Maybe that's where I saw it because I thought. I th- anyways, but I've noticed you guys have been out and about more. Well, we're trying to. I mean, definitely the, the, the those events are the bread and butter. That's yeah. yeah. That's why you know that's where the money comes in really. Uh, yeah. The corner, of the street. Know, that, yeah. That, that Pays for the day day and all that yeah. kind of stuff. But when you do an event and you know when we did Pride, I made we made in, in two days what I made in a month as a painter. Yeah. As a journeyman painter. And it depends on the event too, because like, yeah. there's been yeah. we kind of lucked out with Pride just because uh, Union Street was supposed to be there. And last minute they said they couldn't, but Pride really wanted to have like a vegetarian vegan option. And so I just emailed the guy and was like, hey, I've heard that they dropped out. Is there, you know, could we? And they were like, yeah, sure. So they just, they only charge us like half the rate of what you have to be there. Because every event you have to pay X amount of money to be there. And it could be $100. I've heard some events are like $800. So it all just depends. And that's kind of the hard part, figuring out if it's going to be worth it. So if you have to pay... $600 $600 to be there, you want to make, yeah, you, want to you know, you need to cover that $600 plus that. all those, you know, cost it was just to yeah, be there. So absolutely. it's kind of. Because, yeah, you're going to you know, buy more product and uh, stock up more than you want, basically. So, so yeah, it's kind of hard to find that balance, you know, hopefully, you know, that you're not paying too much and that the vet is worth it, per se. So, do you guys find much time for anything else besides? your food cart and, and yeah, I mean, like I said, what do you guys do in your f- free time any, do you guys have any any, <laughs> any free time available I mean <laughs> no, <laughs> not really yeah, yeah not really I mean that's like one of the reasons why we didn't open on Sunday we want at least one day where we can yeah. relax, relax and kind of get caught up on like paperwork and things and stuff like that I actually finally did go golfing this last Sunday. That was nice. In- interesting. <laughs> interesting. I played Skyrim. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we both play video games, so we'll sit at home and just, you know. Yeah. For, and then we have three dogs, so a lot of times even if we could go out, we usually just want to sit home and roll, you know, be with our dogs. So. Well, excellent. And so just 
in case somebody listening doesn't know where you guys are located, normally during the week you guys are located. What is the what is the address of where you're at? Third South, Second East. Third South, Second East. Second East and Broadway. Second I East say that a lot just yeah, so that's... people because people think it's Third uh, East, Second South. Yeah. So everybody knows Broadway's Third. So Second right. East and Broadway. In your hours, you have like do you have like set hours pretty much or uh, for the Monday most part? Wednesday, eleven thirty to three thirty. Thursdays right. and Fridays. 11.30 to 6. And then Saturdays, we are doing about 11.30 to 3.30 or like 12 to 3. We're still trying to figure out exactly yeah, the, Saturdays. The city's definitely a lot more dead on Saturday. And, it, you know, we, we're staying open because... Which you would think would be the opposite. You would think the city yeah, would be more alive. Think it'd be, no. And the thing, like, I mean, farmer's work is going on, but it's kind of... I mean, it's not yeah. that far away from us, but it's kind of on the other side, so yeah. it's like kind of more foot but traffic's more west. I, I think, you know, that we, we do the, the Saturdays so that people that can get there can, can try to get out and get some, but it's, it's, it's been pretty slow. Yeah. Week, you know, yeah. And there, I mean, we're deciding if we're going to keep it. And do you have it's hard, any? too, because, like, we had to do some work at the commissary, so the other carts are open on Saturday so they're like alright the work we need to do will be on Saturday and it's like okay so it's kind of we lost a few seconds yeah. so we had to re the floor and do some it's just like electrical and plumbing and stuff like that but instead of paying you know a bunch of money for people to do it we are trying to do some of it ourselves and whatnot. And, and you got, do you guys have any events that you're going to be at coming up or, or is there any uh, not right now we'll be I mean, at Strut Your Month excellent on, excellent on the 22nd of this month we're excited for that one. Yeah, that's always that's always fun. I'm excited, but now I'm kind of bummed I can't take my dogs. I usually yeah. take my dogs to it every year. <laughs> and then we're also doing a, a what day is that? What show? It's supposed to be the 29th, but I'm still not sure exactly. Right. Well, where, I don't know where, if that is. where can people? You're on Facebook and Twitter, uh-huh. which I'll post links on the website, so then people can, you know, find out about you guys. I mean, you you, you post on there kind of other events that you're going to be at. Yeah. Besides, we also have a website. It's just saltcitydogs.com. Excellent. I'll post that on there too. Good at, on updating that one. Yeah. Just because it's more like it's on WordPress, so I have to, you know, at least with <laughs> Twitter and Facebook, it's just on your it's phone real quick. Gone. So it's like as you're getting things set up for the day you can hurry and send out a tweet whereas with this website you have to like sit down and you, know. you guys ever thought about like getting on Instagram or are you guys on Instagram at all it's, that's the photo yeah. sharing thing I, you know I have, like, like a personal one but I was going to say I mean that would be kind of cool I think you know get on there and, and I don't know yeah and, I didn't you know. I did entice people one day and I kind of came up with my own brat and I took a picture to entice people to come and all these people are like, oh, I want one so bad. So yeah. that's work. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I guess you could post pictures on Twitter. and Facebook. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, I mean, I think it's great, like Facebook and Twitter. I mean, they're just free, free, free sources and that's, that's what everybody's on. So... Well, anyways, I, 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 I kind of, you know, is there anything else you guys want to include? Like I said, I'll get the links on the website so so uh, people can find you on there. And, I mean, anything you want to add or, or anything, I think, that that we covered that that you want to, that we might not have had a chance to talk more on or, or pretty, I think we learned a lot about you. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was kind of eager to find out because I know that City Dogs went through a few different hands there and, uh kind of get a chance to get to know the new owners a little bit and see what they're doing because I'll tell you when when City Dogs first opened up I was excited you know it was like I think it was one of the first like vegan vegetarian food carty type things so yeah. it was like wow this is really awesome one, yeah you know um, we saw what was that thing that in it was the veg news, news. Yeah. yeah they were talking about like the most vegan you know yeah. friendly cities and yeah, like San Francisco doesn't have any vegan food carts and I think that's really cool that Salt Lake does how we had two for a minute yeah um, the other place is trying to get back on the food and get open is that Union Street yeah. Is it? yeah I was curious uh, you know, because I haven't seen them around. Uh, yeah. They're just kind of working on, on getting them. We ran into them a few places, and they're just like saying, that, you know, they're trying to work some things out and get some yeah. money and whatnot. Cause, yeah, and then that's the thing, too, is, I mean, lucky for us, I guess, is that each year you have to, you know, renew your pay for, like, the health department, the state, and all that kind of stuff. And for us, it's kind of beginning of the year, so you, know, you can always... Yeah. 
but for them it was like in the middle of the summer like right when it's kind of yeah so for them it was harder for them to get like everything up to date so i think they're still working on that and then so they're trying to gonna kind of try to open i hope so yeah they seem like nice craving, people yeah, yeah their food's really good their tacos yeah, <laughs> yeah. well cool i appreciate it and and uh thank you very much thank you all right, that's going to do it for episode three of the I Am Salt Lake podcast. I hope you enjoyed the uh, conversations that we had on this episode. Uh, and I cannot urge you enough to get in touch with both of those, uh, both of those uh, people, the uh, Off the Grid Food Truck as well as City Dogs. Let them know you heard the, uh, their conversations on the podcast and uh, try them out. Uh, try the food truck out and try the uh, food vending cart out. They are uh, delicious food. Well, I know City Dogs is, and, and from what it sounds like, I can only assume that off-the-grid food truck is going to be spectacular. So, anyways, get in touch with us, uh, IamSaltLake at gmail.com. Check us out at IamSaltLake.com, as well as, you know what, you can become a fan of us on Facebook at Facebook.com forward slash IamSaltLake, and uh, find out about all of the... Uh, podcast episodes that I am releasing and uh, all the good stuff. So anyways, that's going to do it for another episode. Get in touch if you want to get involved with the show, if you have any ideas, suggestions, or tips. Again, this is Chris Hollifield, and I cannot thank you enough for listening. Take it easy, Salt Lake, and remember, it only takes one of you to make a difference.